Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. And you know what time it is. It's time for April Favorites, the video where I get to share with you all the beauty products that have made a big impression on me this month. And you know, if I had to describe this month in terms of like how my skin has been doing, allergy season. <laughs> that would be the term that I would give because, you know, it is the height of allergy season. Spring is in full swing and yeah, it really bugs my sinuses. I can get quite stuffed up, lots and lots of painful pressure, very itchy, watery eyes, and it does actually, all that inflammation of my body actually ends up manifesting on my skin as well. And so at the height of allergy season, my skin is also quite inflamed, uh, a little bit more prone to redness, a little bit more close to, you know, being irritated. It's just a little bit more sensitive. And so I've been really like following the exact same routine. Like I've been so consistent with the same routine. And I actually did document that in my allergy skincare routine video. And pretty much everything in that video, I would say is an April favorite, but because those are products I always talk about, there's no, <laughs> No new stuff in there. This is all stuff you've seen me talk about so many times before. Lots of propolis, right? Um, definitely all of those have been staples this month, but don't worry. I do have some uh, new things that have definitely been impressing me as well, and I'm very excited to share them with you today. So if you're so ready, you know the drill. Give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. <laughs> So first is the Rovectin Marine Micellar Deep Cleansing Water. I will admit, I am a cleansing oil girl at heart. I don't think that anything will ever replace that number one spot for me when it comes to, you know, really removing makeup and sunscreen with that first cleanser. Oils have my heart, they really do. I just really enjoy them. So I actually don't really use this product to remove makeup or anything, but I find this so refreshing in the morning time. It feels so good on the skin. And let me tell you, I don't usually reach for cleanser in the morning. I usually just wash my face with water and a washcloth. And um, I've been doing that for a couple of years and it's been really good for my sensitive skin because cleanser, not always necessary in the morning. You know, you're not like cleaning off like the grime and the dirt from the day or thick layers of sunscreen and makeup, right? It's just kind of washing off like the skincare residue from the night before. So usually water does it and that actually keeps things really gentle on my skin. But um, when there's a big seasonal change like what's happening right now, my skin can go a little bit haywire. It doesn't know what it wants to do. And I was definitely overproducing quite a bit of oil just on my forehead and my nose too. Like just the T-zone was just getting really kind of thick and oily. This was still very dry. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like both areas of my skin just don't know what to do. And then come summertime, I'll still have oil, but it'll just kind of balance out a little bit better. So anyways, I've been waking up with like that oily sludgy kind of feeling, which I haven't been going through in a very long time, but I was like, you know, I just really kind of want a cleanser. Um, so I've been using my cellar water whenever my skin just feels kind of thick, especially in that forehead area. And so that's why this product has been um, a big one for me this month. I've been reaching for not every morning, but almost every morning. And it just feels so good. It cuts down the grease. You know what I mean? It cuts through that sludge on my forehead. And then I just rinse it with water and I just feel a lot cleaner, a lot more refreshed. My skin just feels ready to go. And I don't have that excessive oil on my skin. And it's just so much more gentler than using a straight up foaming cleanser. Like that's almost just too much for my skin, but this is just the right amount just to get through and break through that oil. Refreshing is the word I just used to describe it. And that is really probably the key word for this product. It feels so refreshing. This isn't just like a little water that you swipe onto your face. Like this feels really good. It actually almost makes your skin feel hydrated. Like 100% no stripping kind of quality to this at all. This will make your skin feel really comfortable. It's super gentle. Oh, and now's a good time to mention, I've been using these reusable cotton pads with the Rovectin micellar water and I really like them. You know, that's actually a big reason why I never really gravitated towards this type of product before is because I don't like to use so much cotton pads, you know what I mean, and throw them in the trash. But this is a great alternative because these like, reusable cotton pads. I got these, there's like three in a pack here. You can get these like 
almost everywhere now. A lot of people are selling them. You can get them definitely on YesStyle, Amazon. I think even Silco Glam is selling some now. Um, but these are super handy. So the cotton pad's a little bit more oversized and the soft side is like a microfiber kind of material or almost like a really soft washcloth. And then you just, you know, put the product right on here, use it across your face, and then you can just rinse it, maybe use a little bit of water and then hang it to dry. Um, my pack came with three, so you can easily kind of rotate these out throughout the week, throw them in the wash and kind of have fresh ones ready to go. But they've been working really like effortlessly. I kind of thought that these would be a little bit more extra work for me, but they really aren't. And yeah, I'm not throwing all that cotton into the trash can. So I actually found this like a really easy switch in my routine that is definitely saving some waste. Next up is the Isan Kiss Me Mommy UV Aqua Milk. This is a SPF 50 PA plus four. So this is a chemical sunscreen. It uses three different filters. It features oxtinoxate. Guys, I have been saying this wrong. <laughs> I've been saying this totally wrong. I'm trying to like retrain my mouth to say it correctly, but um, kind of embarrassing, but you know what? You know what? Who hasn't said like weird stuff on the internet before, right? We are, we're always learning, but um, so this is actually a chemical filter that covers the UVB uh, rays, and um, it also features Uvinyl A plus and Tinosorb S. Now those are two new generation chemical filters, and that's where the UVA coverage is coming from in this sunscreen. Not only that, but the the two new generation chemical filters actually help the overall photo stability of the sunscreen um, as well. So it's good to, to kind of take a look at what filters are being used. That's actually something that um, I really picked up from Ramon when we did our collaboration together. I love talking to him about sunscreens because this is his passion. It's what he's studying, you know, and I just love picking people's brains about ingredients. And so I definitely have learned that from him about really looking into each filter and, um, you know, where they're covering you like on the wavelengths and everything and how they're working together when you're trying to look for a really good sunscreen. So this is an essence type of sunscreen texture. You know, it's got that creaminess to it, a little bit of moisture, but it um, definitely doesn't feel heavy on the skin and it does not have a finish to it. You know, it's not like a dewy type of sunscreen. It's not totally mattifying either. I think it just has like a very neutral finish to it. And I've had really good luck with reapplying this and putting my makeup over it and not getting any any pilling so in that sense it's really um, really performed nicely and it does not have a white cast either but what I really like about the texture is not just how light it feels and elegant but it actually as you work this into your skin you will start to feel I call it like a grippy feeling you might even kind of think about it like a little tacky like there's resistance as you're rubbing it and it starts to kind of have a little resistance and that's because it's a waterproof sunscreen now it says waterproof on the bottle. I'm just gonna put my two cents here and just say, I really more refer to this as a water resistant or sweat resistant sunscreen because waterproof to me is like something that you can go swimming with and like kind of get your face wet and you'll still like have pretty good protection, right? That really is a very heavy duty waterproof type of sunscreen that you need for that situation. This is not that. And so I just want to be very clear about that. This is not that type of waterproof sunscreen. This to me is more water resistance. And yeah, there's a difference there. So I just wanted to, to put that out there. If you're going to go swimming, just get the really like not elegant, thick types of sunscreens. You'll thank me later. If it's just for swimming, it's fine, but they're going to stay on your skin a lot better. But all that being said, this does have uh, a really nice kind of staying power to it that is so good if you're sweating. Yes, and this is actually something we need to think about because sweat 100% will interrupt your sunscreen coverage and protection. We just don't always think about that as being a factor. We're like apply enough, reapply. But yeah, if it's hot and you're sweating and kind of rubbing your forehead or whatever, you're gonna disrupt the film of sunscreen protection on your skin and you're not gonna be as protected 
However, if you opt for a formula that has a little bit more sweat resistance or water resistance to it, it's gonna hang around a little bit better. It's gonna have a little bit more longevity to it, therefore giving you better coverage. You still gotta reapply and apply enough, but this is gonna make a, a really excellent summer or hot weather type of sunscreen. And that's why I've been gravitating towards this a lot lately, because there have been some days where I'm like, getting a little warm <laughs> over producing a little bit of oil. And this is the type of sunscreen to reach for in those types of situations. Like I said, to get a little bit more longevity and protection out of your sunscreen formulation. Always a great idea to have this type of formula in your sunscreen wardrobe, a concept I have been heavily embracing lately. And I think that you guys should too, um, thinking about different sunscreens for different activities. So this definitely has a huge place in my uh, skincare rotation. And I gotta feature the Shiseido Subaki Premium Repair Hair Mask. I'm, I unboxed this a couple of months ago. I was very excited about it. And I also featured this in a nighttime routine and I told you I've been loving it. But I realized I just never featured it in a monthly favorites, but it definitely deserves a feature. And I just bought the refill. <laughs> so you know the love is real here with this product. Um, this is a very deep conditioning hair mask and um, it's been wonderful. This is kind of a newer offering from the Subaki line. And I think this is great, especially if you do like to take care of your hair, maybe pamper it with a mask once a week, once every two weeks, but maybe you're just kind of like me and I don't want to say lazy because that's kind of a negative word. I don't mean lazy, but maybe just a little bit time poor or just tired. You know, you don't have a lot of time to slap on this conditioning hair mask and wait around in the shower for like five minutes. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, right? You gotta get on with your day, um, you gotta get on with your life, and that's a big reason why I have just been using this so religiously. It's because you don't have to wait around for this. You put this onto your hair in place of your uh, normal conditioner, you can rinse it out right away. Now, I, I'll be honest with you, I do take the, the mindful moment, the mindful minute, if you will, and I do finger comb through my hair with the deep mask on, and I really work it into my ends, and I really make sure that every strand is covered, and maybe I wait for a second or two, and then I rinse it off. But it's not like a five minute, 10 minute ordeal, you know what I mean? It's very, very quick. You can do this on uh, you know, a time crunch and still get really gorgeous locks. And it makes it so soft, so silky, so manageable. It really helps if you are prone to split ends, which I actually am. Um, it really does kind of help um, make the ends not look so frayed and so dried out. So I use this just once a week and it's been keeping my hair in really good repair. And don't feel like you have to use the whole line of products to get really good results. If you're um, you know, loyal to certain conditioner, shampoo and conditioner, and just wanna add this in, this works gorgeously. It brings that really nice deep conditioning kind of shot of moisture into your hair. I have used this with other gasp other <laughs> shampoos and conditioners and it definitely uh, still does a beautiful job so yeah really big recommendation and i love that they sell refills for all of this line so um yeah you just buy the refill packaging and then you don't have to keep buying new plastic packaging over and over again next up is hero cosmetics rescue balm now this is a super unique product in my skincare routine and it's definitely one of those products that i was like i didn't even know what i was missing like I didn't even know I needed a product like this, but I needed a product like this. I find this super unique. Now, you know, there are spot treatments for acne when, you know, your pimples coming up, you want it to go away, usually like an exfoliating type of spot treatment, right? But what do you put on your pimple after it's drained or popped? What do you do then to take care of it post, you know, blemish? This. That's what this is. This is a post pimple uh, care cream, basically. And I find that really unique. I don't know that I've found any other product that is really aimed at um, helping to heal the area of a drained or popped pimple. So definitely very unique and this works beautifully. You know, after you've had a pimple kind of erupt on your skin and you have gotten it to go down or away or it drained into a pimple patch or it popped, it happens, it's okay, no shame, we've all been there, right? Um, you are kind of left with a essentially a wound on your face, right? You know, it can be kind of bad looking, it can um, be red and raw and angry and um, 
you just kind of want that area to calm down. And this is something that does that because this is really, you know, I actually kind of think about this like a Sika cream. Now there is no centella in it, so it's not technically a Sika cream, but this is the type of cream that is focused on calming, soothing, and repairing your skin. Because we've got lots of skin soothing ingredients like panthenol in here. We've also got a ton of skin repairing peptides like copper tripeptide one. And fun fact, you know, those are really great. That's a really great anti-aging peptide. It helps with fine lines and wrinkles, but it's also a beautiful skin repairing peptide. Um, usually the anti-aging peptides can help with skin repair as well and copper tripeptide has a wound healing ability. And so instead of relying on centella to do the healing like a Sika cream, this relies on four different peptides and it really does help the area heal up and mend a lot faster. And the very first time I used this, it really helped to reduce the, the inflammation and redness of the area, which just kind of helps masquerade it a little bit, right? You know what I mean? Like it's just a lot less obvious on your face when it's not super big and red. So that was great. It reduced the redness and the inflammation, but even within a, a day or two, it really helped the skin kind of heal up and come back together and kind of smooth over a whole heck of a lot faster if I had not been using this cream. So I've been super duper impressed. Like I said, I have not seen anything else like this on the market. I find this very, very impressive, very, very innovative. And honestly, if you do go through pimples, you very likely need something like this in your acne arsenal. So quickly, I want to shout out sun sleeves. Yeah, these are so cool. Um, I feature these in my sunscreen, uh, how to level up your sunscreen game, like a pro video that just came out. So you're, you're probably already familiar with these, but I just got to like emphasize how cool these are. Um, and these are a great UV protective accessory, especially like for me where I live, you know, the sun is just staying out longer and longer it's getting warmer and warmer but the UV is getting more intense and so it's time to step up the game um, and be a little bit more careful um, with sun protection and these are so easy especially if you are in a car a lot either as a passenger or as a driver um, I just feel like the car is just like a UV hot box especially in the middle of summer like it can get really hot in there it can get really intense and I just feel like it's just like beaming down and burning my skin because it's just my skin gets so hot to the touch so anyways if you are worried about you know sun damage especially like on the tops of your arms or like on the tops of your hands from driving these are so good because you just don't always have body sunscreen on you don't always have time to apply it all over sometimes you just gotta go you know and so this is something great that you can just slip on when you've got a short sleeve shirt on i don't but i <laughs> pushed up my sleeves for you guys but yeah it's kind of like a like a long opera length glove they come in different lengths too um but it covers all that area of skin that was showing with uv protective fabric this style is nice because it comes over the tops of your hands i know some people like driving gloves. I personally like this style because I've got my hands free and it's covering more of my arm. I'm a little bit more concerned about damage up here on the tops of my arms. I got mine off a of Yes Style actually a couple of years ago. I got like a big like variety pack. I got a ton of them. And so I'm still working through <laughs> the ones that I bought before, but they still offer them in a variety of styles. They offer them on Amazon. They're fairly affordable wherever you want to get them. And they're just ingenious, super handy, and definitely a really smart part of your UV protective accessories. And one more shout out, <laughs> I have to give a shout out to the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde Eyeshadow Palette. I bought this back in December and I've been a fan of it like since I got it, but I will tell you, it definitely deserves a shout out because this is the only eyeshadow palette I've been reaching for for months. And a lot of you guys ask me about like what color eyeshadow and stuff that I've been wearing and it's all from here. So so I really, I really want to just spend a little bit of time telling you about this because I actually do get a lot of questions about it and I like legitimately love this. Um, so I actually bought this palette and you can like see I've already dug into some of these colors. I bought this palette to be my fun palette because I have a ton of neutrals. I got lots of browns, lots of kind of like the peachy coral kind of colors. Um, and I just wanted to kind of infuse my makeup choices with a little bit more color, a little bit more fun, something a little bit more adventurous even. And so I actually bought this to, for like just for fun colors. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? But the funny thing is, I wear this every day. Well, every day I wear makeup, let's be honest. Like, this is a post-2020 world. Whenever I'm wearing eyeshadow, it's always from here. And I have actually found this to be surprisingly versatile. And that's why I wanted to bring it up too, because you wouldn't think that this is, but it is. So today's eyeshadow look is definitely from here. Um, some great pinks, some great purples, some great um, matte colors with good pigment and blendability to them. They're not super chalky mattes, which I love. Um, the glitters uh, don't have a lot of fallout, which is great. This, um, this like mint, aqua -y blue kind of color. I love this. You've seen this in a couple of videos. It's very unique. It's very um, something that really stands out, right? But I've been having a lot of fun with that color too. So anyways, lots of great blending shades, really good glitters, just a really nice balance in this palette. And like I said, it is surprisingly like an everyday kind of palette for me. And I wanted to shout it out because like I said, you guys ask me all the time and the majority of the time, it's from this one. So I hope you guys enjoyed those picks for April. And of course, you know, I'd love you to share your favorite products from the past month in the comment box below. And, you know, I just want to share kind of like, you know, I always do this in every favorites video. I just like to take a moment to kind of reflect on the month, not with skincare necessarily, but just how I've been feeling. And, um, you know, one thing that really has emerged for me in the past month is kind of, I guess, just a phrase. And I just, I found myself saying this a lot. I just feel like the fog is lifting. You know what I mean? And there's a lot, there's a lot to that. There's like a lot of deep meaning to that. But I think that what I had realized for myself was that, like I said, in a post 2020 world, right? Um, over the last year, I didn't realize how much of a funk I had taken on with everything. I mean, of course, I've shared with you the moments where it was just like, we were really scared. We didn't know what was going on. We felt a loss of control. I shared with you, I had nightmares about maskless people breathing in my face, right? Um, and just the high intensity anxiety that we're just we're like kind of constantly dealing with. But even so, you know, I, I would say that I was somebody who didn't really feel like they were in a real deep funk, if that makes sense. And yet, you know, something about this month, like I said, the fog is lifting, the weight is lifting, the, the curtain is being pulled back a little bit in a good way. I just feel like there's a lot of clarity all of a sudden, like a fog from my mind is being lifted and then all of a sudden there's a lot of clarity and maybe it's because it feels realistic to plan ahead, which we haven't been able to do for a long time because we just haven't known. And there still is a lot of unknown, don't get me wrong, but I just feel like it's starting to feel a lot more tangible. It's there. We're almost there. It's getting better. I know we have a long way to go. I know not everybody is doing better, but I just kind of wanted to share that kind of like, you know, blink and you'll miss it kind of feeling, honestly. Um, sometimes we're so busy and sometimes we just push down and suppress so much for so long that you will get those little moments in your mind like, hey, wait a second, I feel good. Hey, wait a second, I feel clarity. If you're not tuning in, you will miss it and you'll miss that kind of aha moment. And I just want to say like I had a very quiet aha moment this month where I was like, I feel clearer, I feel lighter, I feel, yeah, clarity is a great word for it. The fog has been lifted and I just wanted to share that with you because maybe you're feeling that too, but we just haven't quite recognized it yet. So with that being said, you know I am hoping that you are healthy, that you are happy, that you are safe wherever you are in the world. I cannot wait to see you in the next video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.